Hello everyone and welcome back to ASP.NET Core 1.0. My name is Steve Bishop and in this video we're going to talk about model binding. So model binding allows us to pass data from our web pages to our methods in our classes. And it's really neat how this all works out. So first we start off with an HTTP request, which is just a typical request which has our route data. And in the URL, we're going to specify the controller and the action. And this is part of what's called the route data. Along with our HTTP request though, is also our data values. Now the data values in this case could be a scalar value or you can actually pass an entire class. So for those of you who don't know what scalar values are, it just means one single piece of information. It could be a string, it could be an integer, just one piece of information. That's what scalar means. So we have this ability to pass an entire class full of data to our MVC application from uh, using this HTTP request. And we have our class controller over here. We have our home controller with an action name. It could be index or any other type of action name. But you'll also notice that we have this type parameter. So we actually have a parameter that can be passed into the action name. And that parameter can then be used within the code of that action uh, or method. So as we've seen before, the controller the, the route of the controller gets passed via the URL to tell MVC which controller it should be pointing this request to, along with the action, which is also part of the URL. So the controller and the action are in the URL, and even scalar values can be part of the URL. And we've seen this with the ID, when we just simply passed in an ID number along in the URL, it passed that ID value and put it into that parameter of our index action. Now, if you're going to pass an entire class though, you're going to want to do it through the body of your HTTP request. So it's not something that you're gonna pass along in your URL because typically classes are gonna be more than just one single property. They're gonna be uh, multiple properties. So now that you know that you can pass an entire class within the HTTP request, and it gets inserted into the uh, parameter of the action. How does that all work? Well, in your web page, you're going to have an HTML form. And these are very common. You guys probably, if you've done anything with HTML before, you already know what an HTML form is. Now on your form, you're going to have several different inputs. And one of the attributes of the input is the name of that input. So you have an input tag, you're giving it an attribute of name, and the name attribute, you're actually assigning a value that is the name. And you can see here in yellow that I've said ID, first name, and last name. So we're gonna have three different inputs and they're all named basically what we should see equal to the contact class properties. So here we have our parameter of our method or our action and that parameter would be of a type contact and that contact class has three different properties and you can see the name on the html form the name attribute for each one of our inputs matches the name of our properties on our contact class then the job of mvc and model binding is to simply just assign the values that come from each one of the inputs on that HTML form to the different properties on our contact class. And it's really that simple. Let's take a look at an example of this in our Visual Studio. So the first thing we're gonna do is comment out this contact uh, object that we were creating and instantiating and filling in the data. Uh, and instead of putting it right here and assigning the values inside the index method, I'm going to create a parameter here of the same type of class called contact. So we're using the contact class as a parameter. I'm gonna go ahead and call this contact with a little c, lowercase c. And what's gonna happen then is whatever gets passed in as, a con as this parameter called contact 
is then going to be uh, assigned to the contact property that we have down here on our view model. Now there is a bit of a situation we need to consider and take care of. And that is when a fir person first lands on the index page, they are not going to be passing in a parameter, right? They're just gonna be going to our Contoso web page, our home page. And as a result, they're not passing in any values. So this really won't work. We need to make sure that if somebody's going to hit this index method, that they are in fact passing in a contact parameter. And what we can do is we can use our HTTP post attribute to ensure that the only way that this index method gets called is if somebody is using the HTTP post action method or the action verb, excuse me, and that that, uh, that HTTP post should also hopefully come along with some data that could be as part of the body of the HTTP request that could be passed in and assigned to this contact object. So we're just basically saying, if you're coming to the web page without posting any values inside of uh, the body of your HTTP request, and you're not using the post action verb, then you're not gonna be going to this particular method. Now, because we're assigning this HTTP post attribute, and we have a parameter here for the index, that means our signature is different on this index method than if we went to up here and just created another public I action result index method. So we can have multiple index methods just as long as the signatures are different. And it's also, uh, you're also gonna need to have a different attribute here. So we're gonna use HTTP get. And that way there's no confusion with the MVC, um, this MVC architecture to try to determine which index method should they be going to. Now, if we just did a return, oops, return view, then we'd run into a bit of a problem because the index uh, view is expecting a view model, okay? And it needs data in this view model so that it can post something here to the body of our of our page and what we really want this view to do oops this view that uh, the user first gets when they first come to the index action is that they should be presented with some sort of html form so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go to my home uh, folder here and instead of using index i'm going to create a new uh, i'm going to use a new view here so do new item MVC page, and we'll do index, I'll just call this uh, index with form, okay? And let's take all this good stuff out of here, and we'll do an HTML, and we'll call this home, let's see, what did we call this? We, we used, yeah, home, and then we had in the body, we had our data. Okay, so this particular index with form, we're gonna go down here to the body and we're gonna create some, uh, we're gonna create a form here. So you use the form tag and I'm just gonna use the code snippet that comes with it here. And it says that the action needs to go to forward slash something. And I'm just gonna do the home index. So this is the, location this is the url that we want to send the form data to and the method is post and the method is important because this needs to correspond with back here on our home controller which type of action verb are we using and that would be post right so when the user submits the data from this form it's going to go using the action verb of post and that post action verb will be picked up in our MVC controller here when we have the HTTP post attribute it will know to assign the values from our uh, form to this index method with the parameter of contact okay so that is how that all relates we need to make sure we have that method equals post so that it knows to use this index action that has the, po the HTTP post attribute. Okay, so let's move on here. 
inside of our form, let's go ahead and add some uh, some inputs. And the inputs need to match the class that we are using here. So our contact class, which is our parameter for index, has three different properties on it, ID, first name, and last name. So that means on our form, we need to have the same corresponding inputs. So I'm just gonna use the input code snippet. The type of the first value is going to be ID, uh, or excuse me, the, uh, the contact property is ID, and I can use the text input type to specify an ID value. Then for the name, the name attribute on our input, the name needs to match the property name. So that would be ID. So I'm gonna go ahead and do ID. And I'm gonna go ahead and create some more inputs here. So we'll do input. The type is once again going to be text. Oops, it uh, auto skip there, there we go. And the name is going to be, let's look again at the contact properties. It's first name. So we'll do first name. And I'll just copy this and paste this and we'll do last name. Okay, so we need one more control and that's going to be a button of type submit. And when the user clicks on this submit button, it's actually going to submit the data values from these three different inputs. So this is going to be a uh, uh, value is equal to submit and we'll go ahead and say submit as the text okay so let's go ahead and save that and we need to fix up our home controller so that now our if the index action gets called via the get request that it will instead of showing the index uh, view, which would be this one, that would be incorrect. So we need to make sure that we send along the index with form uh, view instead. So we'll do inside of the view, we can pass in the name of our view that we want to pass in. So that would be index with form. So let's go ahead and save this and let's give it a run. So the form isn't exactly spectacular, but we know that the first one is ID, the second one is first name, and the third one is last name. So we'll just do three, and we'll do Joe uh, Islander. Why not? Okay, and then we'll go ahead and click on the submit button, and we can see that the values that we put into the form get passed into our index, uh, our index action, uh, and then we can see them appear here in our index view. So hi there, Joe Islander, your ID is three and you work for the company. So let's clean this up a little bit. I'm just gonna fix the form up just a little bit to make things a little easier. So we'll do index with form. We'll actually add a label. And this label is going to be ID. And then this label is going to be first name and we'll do label last name we should probably put some colons in there and i'm also going to add some breaks so we'll do br Okay, so now it's gonna look a little nicer. And what I'm gonna do is, cause I wanna show you what's going on behind the scenes in Fiddler here. So I'm gonna remove everything that's in Fiddler right now. And instead of running with debug on, I'm gonna go ahead and just run without debugging. Okay, so again, our form isn't perfect, but at least we have some labels so we know what each one of these values is for. Let's do uh, 12 for an ID. We'll do Sam, we'll do capital Sam and Terabon. And when we click on submit, we get, hi there, Sam Terabon, your ID is 12. So if we look at Fiddler here, we can see our initial request, which was just to the URL, which was uh, the forward slash. So this would default to our home index using the get 
action verb. And you can see right here, get is in the headers of this request. So I'm looking at the raw request, we could see uh, get to this localhost HTTP uh, or localhost 52577. And the response that this request got back was the form that we created down here. And when we submitted the form, this then sent this request back to our web page or to our web application. And you can see that the values here, and this is kind of a nice little thing about Fiddler is it automatically formats this for you so you can see what the body of the request was. And if there was any query string, which there wasn't, so we don't need to worry about that. But the raw response was exactly as we expected it, as we've seen in past index responses. Now, if we look at the raw of the request itself, we'll see that the post action verb was used as part of the headers of this request. There's also this thing called content type, which was saying that this was a X WWW form URL encoded. And this is basically telling MVC how to interpret the data, how to interpret the form that is being sent back to it. And then here inside the body of the request is where we can find the actual data. So ID equals 12, first name equals Sam, and last name equals Terabon. So these values here in the body are then interpreted as an actual contact class and placed into the ID field, first name and last name of our contact class, which if we look at our home controller, that contact object of type contact is then assigned to our uh, view model called VM. So that's where it's getting assigned right there. And then of course, we're passing into our index view. We're passing in the view model. And then the index uh, view has this model declared on it of type home index view model. And since the uh, the contact information, the contact property on our home index view model had a first name, last name, and ID, they appear perfectly in our index view. So there you go. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please don't forget to like, favorite, and subscribe. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next video.